Good afternoon, and welcome to this short presentation about the CLARE project. CLARE stands for Causal Reasoning for Real-Time Attack Identification in Cyber Physical Systems. My name is Georg Dan. I'm professor at the Division of Network and Systems Engineering at KTH. The project team of CLARE consists of myself, Raksha Ramakrishna, Young Woo Kim, and Hendrik Sandberg at KTH, Associate Professor Saurav Amin at MIT, and Professor Clara Narstedt at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. The goal of the CLARE project is to develop algorithms and tools for the detection and identification of anomalous data and protocol messages in cyber physical systems with a focus on electric power systems. The expected outcomes of the project are on the one hand, a data set of substation automation traffic focusing on GOOS that includes attack and non-attack samples, and algorithms and the method for the detection and identification of different attacks against GOOS traffic in an infrastructure that consists of multiple intelligent electronic devices and layer two switches. If we look at the overall problem of detecting attacks, typically what we have is some network logs and event logs together with sensory inputs in the case of a cyber physical system. We try to correlate the events, that is the log entries, and we use threat intelligence and behavior analytics to obtain situational awareness, which is knowing what is going on in the system right now. If we have accurate situational awareness, we can then take good response actions. This is then response automation. Within this bigger framework, what we are focusing on is how to use machine learning models for improving error correlation, how to combine model-based and machine learning approaches in the case of cyber physical systems, how to fuse and that is combine information from different sources for causal reasoning about potential attacks. And finally, how robust and scalable are the resulting machine learning based solutions. Our approach to addressing these questions is relying on four pillars. First, we aim to collect a Goose protocol data set from a power grid testbed located at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. We want to develop a state representation using machine learning together with active learning. Then we plan to develop a predictive model for incident detection, where we use a real-time belief about the protocol state and the physical state and the IT system state for computing anomaly scores for events that happen in the system. And finally, to use causal reasoning for attack identification using a maximum likelihood matching of the observed events in the system and comparing with representations of potential attack scenarios that could actually lead to the events that we observe. To give you an idea of our model of the security state, we consider that time is slotted and we model the system's health in terms of security as a hypergraph that consists of a set of nodes and hyper edges. The nodes are conditions and the hyper edges are exploits. So in the image on the right, you can see a simple example where we have initial exploits E1 and E2 and showing conditions C1 and C2. In this example, condition C1 is true, that is something is compromised. Now, what is then a security state? A security state is the set of enabled conditions. In this example on the left, the state S1, it means that condition one is compromised. On the right, you see a new state where conditions one and two are compromised. To give you a pragmatic example, imagine that condition one is that a particular version of an FTP daemon is running on a particular host. And condition two could be that the FTP server is actually remotely accessible. 
Now, what could be the ex exploit? The exploit could be, for example, the CV 1999-0878 exploit that is known to be effective against this particular version of the FTP server. If executed, this exploit would give root privilege on the target host to the attacker, in which case C3 would also be enabled and we get to a new state. Now, our ethical model consists of the following components. We assume that the attacker chooses exploits at random according to a certain distribution. And there is a certain probability that an exploit, if attempted, will succeed. Now, if an attacker uses an exploit, that will generate a particular alert or a set of alerts with a certain probability. If we put this together in every time step, we obtain an alert vector that includes on the one hand, the alerts raised due to ethical activity. On the other hand, it includes false positive, that is false alerts that happen with a certain probability. Overall, what we have here is a hidden Markov model. We observe certain events that emanate from this Markov model but we cannot observe the underlying state of the model, which we actually would like to know. Our defender model assumes that the defender can observe the alerts and can manually inspect up to a certain number of alerts every time slot. Now, if the defender decides to inspect a particular alert, then the investigation will lead to a modified alert uh, but this investigation may actually be bogus. For example, you may investigate a true alert, that is an alert that was raised due to ethical activity, and you may conclude that it was a false alert. Or vice versa, you may investigate a false alert and you may conclude that it's actually a real alert. Now, the defender will use these observations for updating its belief about the security state. The defender's cost is the state estimation error, that is how good is the estimate of the defender about what is actually going on in the system. And the defender would like to find a policy that minimizes this state estimation error. Now, how can the defender minimize this state estimation error? by choosing the best alerts to investigate as a function of its current belief. What is difficult about this problem is that in practice, the state is unknown, it cannot be observed, and hence the defender cannot calculate its estimation error. So what we propose is to use the uncertainty of the belief as a proxy for minimizing this estimation error. The intuition here is that the low uncertainty will likely lead to an accurate belief. We propose two candidates for choosing what to investigate. The first policy, which we call the max entropy policy, investigates an alert that decreases the entropy most. The alternative policy we propose called the base factor policy investigates the alert that is most ambiguous given what we know about the system. We evaluated these policies on an example system. And at the bottom right, I show you results that show the estimation error as a function of the investigation error probability. And what you can see here is that the error of the two proposed policies is about 10, 20% of the error of the alternate policies, which for example, are to investigate always the alert that has the lowest false positive rate. To give you an idea of estimating the physical system state, consider for example, a distribution system, a power distribution system that has a certain physical topology. Let's call this the graph G. Now at any point in time, the active topology of this power distribution system is a subset, subgraph of this graph. This we call the active topology. What can we observe about this system? We can obtain a measurement vector, which consists of power injections at the nodes and voltage phasors at the nodes. And our objective 
is to build a belief about the active topology and the system state, that is the voltage phasors at the nodes. What we propose is to use a combination of blind community detection and probabilistic topology identification for solving this problem. For community detection, we use the voltage phasors to compute the sample covariance matrix. Then we take this sample covariance matrix, compute its eigenvectors, and take the top k eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors to form a new matrix on which we perform k-means clustering on the coordinates. This would provide us the clusters of nearby buses. On the right hand side, I show you an example that compares this approach in terms of the actual topology at the top, you see the sorted Laplacian, and the result of community action using this approach. What you see is that the detected communities are fairly close to the actual communities in this power system. Now, these results are from a power transmission system. Question is, can we extend the methodology to three topologies, which is the case in the case for distribution system, and how to combine this approach with probabilistic topology estimation to actually get the topology and not only the communities. So to summarize our project, we are working on providing improved situational awareness in cyber physical systems with the objective to be able to provide improved incident response. We are working on computational methods for real-time situational awareness concerning the IT security state and the physical system state. And we apply this to substation automation in the context of Goose protocol messages. I would like to thank you for listening in the name of all the project members. And I invite you to visit the, the below webpage following the link provided in this slide.